So the next preparation project that I'm going to take on is this massive bone block here. This is a couple of photos of before any prep work was done. As you can see, there's bones, cross sections of bones, which are poking out um, across all sections of this bone block, which probably measures about a foot and a half by a foot and a half on each side. This bone block itself was found by a local fossil collector on the Holderness Coast up in Yorkshire. The Holderness Coast is uh, principally known for glacial till, so boulders and rocks and clays which are all brought down in the last glaciation uh, period. However, the rocks generally originate from further north and they're brought down by glaciers. Um, this one dates, this block itself dates from about 180 million years ago from the Toarcian period of the, uh, of the lower Jurassic and was probably brought down from somewhere near Whitby um, or north of Whitby where you typically find this type of material. When I first saw this block, uh, the cross sections of the bones uh, looked quite interesting. They were kind of flat plates with uh, strange uh, undulations within them and they looked very much like crocodile scoots. And in fact, as you'll see as we progress through this time-lapse preparation video, uh, that they were in fact crocodile scoots. Um, what typically is found on the Yorkshire coast is a, is a species called uh, Steniosaurus belensis. Um, although I think more recently that's now been uh, reassigned as as, as macrospondylus, but effectively it was an early crocodiliform uh, from, the, uh, from the early Jurassic. And here's a good example of one of those scoots um, that I'm just uncovering now. Um, as you can see, it's a bony plate which is um, heavily pitted. And these bony plates uh, run pretty much all the way down the, the, the back of this crocodile and act as a basically an armoured exoskeleton for this crocodile. I think in total, this uh, preparation took around 30 to 35 hours worth of work. There was just a huge amount of matrix that had to be got out of this block before you got down to the, to the bony fossil um, and allowed you to get into the finer preparation. As I normally do, all of the equipment that I've used um, to prep this out, mainly pneumatic air scribes, um, are all detailed in the description. The pen I'm using here um, is the Zoic Paleotech T-Rex pen, and it is brutal in the way that it removes bulk matrix. And it's great for the first stage of the fossil prep, which is kind of called roughing out, where you take off the bulk of the matrix at relatively higher speed. You can move through it with this kind of uh, more aggressive pens. But then you have to move down into different pens, which uh, work in more finer detail. But this, this T-Rex pen is, um, is outrageous for the speed at which it removes uh, the bulk matrix, as you can see here it's just blasting it off in massive chips. Once you've done the roughing out stage uh, of the preparation of blocks like this, a really successful strategy for fossil preparation of Yorkshire bone blocks um, is acid prep. These bone blocks tend to respond really well to uh, diluted levels of acetic acid dissolving the limestone but retaining the bone. Um, and it, great, it brings out detail uh, really effectively. So I tested this out a number of times on this block. Um, the problem that I found was that the size of these scutes are so big and the bone was so uh, poor us, that despite all the protection of the bone with things like candle wax and paraloid and various other protective chemicals, uh, the acid kind of leached into corners of the bone uh, and made it incredibly fragile. So unfortunately, acid prep uh, wasn't a possible option for this bone block um, and I had to mechanically get into all the details um, which, can, uh, which can be very time consuming and hence why this bone block took me such a long time. As I got down into this bone block and started to expose a lot of the, uh, the fossil material, it was clear that this was only actually a very small section of a giant croc. Um, I don't know how big this would have been, but just one of those scoots, the largest in this bone block, measures about 15 centimetres wide or about six inches, which makes it an enormous beast. And this really does only represent a small fraction um, of the fossil creature within this block. There are, there are about 12 to 15 exposed scutes. Um, there's a few rib bones. There's an example of one that I'm just prepping out in the corner there. There are the tops of three uh, vertebral processes. So uh, the very tops of the, uh, of the vertebrae, which I'm just exposing a little bit more of here. So there's a lot in this bone block, but as I say, it really only represents a very small amount of this early crocodile. Um, I, you, know, you, you start wondering where the rest of the blocks could be and whether they're still out there to find. 
Now that the roughing out is done, it's now into the detail and it's the unfortunate task of having to get each into each of these pitted areas of all the crocodile scoots. And there are probably about, I don't know, about a hundred of these pits within each of the scoots. Um, so it's a, a fairly uh, a time consuming task of getting the pens carefully into each of these grooves and cleaning out all the matrix. This is where acid prep would have come in super handy, but unfortunately the bone was just too porous to be able to do that. Um, so the time consuming task starts here. Yeah. This is uh, the point that I'm going to leave you uh, to it and watch the, uh, the, the rest of the prep. Um, it really starts coming together here as I start cleaning up the, uh, the detail of, of these scoots and all the rest of the bones. Um, and I really like, hope you like the finished product. I'm really pleased uh, with it. I think it displays really nicely. If you like uh, these fossil prep videos, I'm going to try and do uh, many more of these. Um, so uh, subscribe if you like, um, and I'll try and put one of these um, on uh, every couple of weeks. Thanks very much.